So we go on. So today is queuing theory. much more elementary. So no trig functions, no exponentials. The math will be touchdown, thank you. <laughs> the math will be much more elementary than it was certainly than it was yesterday, but it's probably going to be the most elementary math you've seen since uh, since you've seen me. So uh, but that doesn't mean it's e it's any easier. The really the hard part about queuing theory is queuing theory is one of these theories which uh, lends itself well to word problems, and interpreting the word problems correctly is the is the hard part. It's really the hard part. So if you get if you get if you interpret everything correctly, then it's just high school algebra to get uh, to, to to get the right answer. Okay, so the hard part is, 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 is interpreting these word problems. So we're going to do this. There aren't that many slides here, so I'm going to run out of the slides before, well before the time is up. Uh, but then I'll go to the board. I might go to the board intermittently anyway, just to do more examples. Um, just to see, you know, just to interpret these word problems. Okay, so there's a, there's a way of interpreting these word problems that once you see a few, you get the hang of it. And then you say, oh, okay, I know what this is. Yeah. All right. Questions? Any questions before we get started? Okay. Queuing theory uh, is a subset of what's called operations research. That's where they're originally developed, but it has lots of applications. It has applications in industrial design. It has applications in network protocols, um, ergonomic research, lots of different places. Um, we'll talk about single cues. We'll describe Kendall notation, which is a way of describing a cue qualitatively. Uh, we will spend most of our time with MM1 cues. These are, these are probably, first, they're the simplest to analyze, and second, they seem to be all over the place, so that's good. I mean, the most common cue that you would you would imagine is also the easiest to analyze. Um, and then we'll talk about all the system performance parameters and the operating characteristics of this cue. Uh, we'll do uh, we'll do we'll do several examples of MM1 cues. And it's not listed here, but I'll talk about MMS cues where S is bigger than one. Uh, so. All this will be clear. This is an example. These are examples of Kendall notation. So I'm going to describe what this means. Okay. So lot of different applications of queuing theory. Uh, particularly in networks, that's why you're learning it, really, because this applies to computer networks. In particular, routers have queues that they line up the packets in, and you have to understand the characteristics. And com computers have lots of cues all over the place, it's like uh, print jobs waiting for a printer, or processes running uh, waiting for the CPU, and so on. So, so queuing theory is useful in all of this uh, operating. Theory. Okay, so well, what is a queue? It, it's a it's just a collection of things waiting to be served. A collection of objects, people, which could be people, they could be packets, they could be print jobs. They're waiting to be served. And generally, an item comes into a queue, enters a queue, stays in the queue for a while, and then eventually gets processed. And so it stays in the queue for a certain amount of time, and then it's, and then it's processed. And the processing itself takes a little bit of time. And then it leaves the system. Okay, so that's the basic model how we're how we're thinking of the cube. So here are some characteristics we're interested in. What percentage of the time or the probability that the service facilities are idle? In other words, 
nobody's being processed and the queue is empty. So the service facility is just sitting there idle and not doing anything. At any given time, what's that probability? Uh, what is the probability that a specific number of customers are in the system? So these items we're calling customers, even though they may not be people, they may be packets. We, we will call them customers. Average number of customers in the system. Average time a customer spends in the system. Average number of customers in the waiting line. So the difference between the average number of customers in the system and the average number of customers in the waiting line is that the system includes customers that are currently being served. And the waiting line is the queue of customers before, they be served, before they're being served. So the amount of time you spend in the system is generally going to be a bit longer. It's going to be the queue time plus the processing time. That's going to be the system time. Uh, and the number of customers, yeah, okay. Same thing. So average time each customer spends in the waiting line and, and average time each customer spends in the system, um, which is actually not listed here. Percentage of time or probability that an arriving customer will have to wait. This will be the probability at any point in time that the queue, uh, or so, so all the... Um, all the servers are busy. So if you have to wait, you, you'll, be, you'll enter the queue first. If, if there's a server that's idle and you enter, then you'll immediately be served and you don't wait at all. So those are some basic operating characteristics you might be interested in there. So we are going to deal with single queues only. So our systems will consist of a single queue. There, you can, you can uh, describe multiple queue systems but we're not going to do that. We're going to consider single queues. We assume there are one or more servers. Customers arrive at different times. Uh, if a server is busy, a single queue then begins to form as people arrive. If the server, if the if the server, if all the servers are busy, then uh, in this case there's only one. But if there's more than one, if all the servers are busy and somebody arrives, they get put in a queue. Okay, so a queue begins to form at that point. So, what's going to characterize the, the queue is the input process. How are we modeling the arrivals? People actually coming into the system. How do we model that? Are they coming in at random? Are they coming in, you know, at definite intervals? So, that, you know, one, one every minute there's going to be a new customer exactly on the minute. Uh, or do we have in, no information at all about when customers are coming? The service mechanism is the other uh, important thing, and that is, uh, or the second important thing is, what, uh, what, how are service times distributed? Are they random, or are does every every service take a definite amount of time, like three minutes, period, for every service? Or is there some other there's some other rule to the service time? And finally, the queue discipline. The queue discipline means who gets served next in the queue. So uh, when you think of a standard queue, a simple queue, the person who is served next is that so people are served in the order that they arrive. That's called first in, first out also called FIFO, a FIFO queue. That's a standard, that's, a, that's like the standard default queue discipline, but there are other disciplines. Like you might just pick, pick, a, random, uh, pick a random member of the queue and take that out and serve that person. Okay. Doesn't sound as fair, but you might do that. Or you might assign priorities to the various uh, customers coming in, and then you take the highest priority. That's called a priority. All right, so in the input process, we're interested in the length of time between consecutive arrivals. The service mechanism is how long the servers take to process each request, and the queue discipline is how customers are chosen for service, and there might be a maximum length of the queue. And if the queue reaches the maximum length, or its capacity, 
and a new arrival comes in, that arrival is just turned away and is not allowed to enter the system. Okay. All right. So to describe these various combinations, we have candle notation. So candle notation describes the qualitative aspects, mostly qualitative aspects. So we describe a, a Q model is described by a series of letters or numbers separated by forward slashes. And the first letter indicates the arrival process. And this is typically a Poisson process. You remember it now back from probability. So this is going to harken back to probability a little bit. You remember what a Poisson process is? I'll remind you. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, it's eons ago. Uh, basically, an event, and we'll, in this case, we would call the event an arrival, because that's what they're, yeah. uh, an occurrence can occur at any time, at any point in time, independently of when other occurrences occur. But we have an average rate of occurrence per unit time. So we've got, you know, if you, on average, there are going to be 50 customers coming in per day. But customers can come in at any, you know, given that average rate, customers can come in at any time at random independently of any, anybody else coming in. That's called a Poisson process. And with a Poisson process, we learned that the number of customers, um, coming in in a, unit, in, in, in a unit time is Poisson distributed. So the chances that there are like, you know, 30 customers exactly coming in, you know, in, in, the, in the time is going to be, you know, what is it, lambda to the 30 times e to the minus lambda divided by 30 factorial is that thing. And also in a Poisson process, the time to the next arrival is exponentially distributed. Okay, so those are the things we learned way back when. Um, that is typically how we're going to model the arrival process. So that's a very popular choice for the arrival process. And we and that we use the letter M for that. M doesn't stand for Poisson, obviously. Uh, it stands <laughs> for Markov. A Poisson process is a particular kind of Markov process. Um, the service process. In the service process, another popular choice is that the service times are exponentially distributed. So that's also described by a Poisson process. If you start service, the amount of service time you get until the end of service is exponentially distributed. So that's also, we also use the letter M for that, because it's the same base. You get the same distribution. That's the second letter. The third letter is the number of servers. How many servers do you have? So if a server is empty, I'm sorry, once a server gets done with a customer, if there's anybody in the queue, the server immediately gets the next person in the queue. Okay. Or if, it's, if, if the queue is empty and the servers are idle and somebody comes into the queue, that's, that, that person is grabbed by one server immediately. Uh, K, the fourth letter, is the maximum capacity of the queue. So is there a, a maximum capacity so that if the queue gets full and an arrival comes in, that arrival is just turned away? Um, we might have a, a, a finite population of customers. So we only run the system for a finite amount of arrivals. And then we might gather statistics on what happens for that finite population. And Z is the service discipline or the queue discipline, which means, for example, is the queue first in, first out? Or is it first in, random out? Where you go, you know, just take somebody at random. And then there, I guess there are other possibilities. You could do last in, first out. That actually has a name in computer science. You know, that is called stack. a stack. Yeah, LIFO, and it's called a stack. So, Last and first out is, is LIFO, and a stack is the structure that's LIFO. Basically, a stack is just a list 
and you insert at one end of the list and you remove from the same end. So whatever you put in last, you're going to take out first. All right, so here's a typical thing down here. You can barely read that, but that's okay. It's going to be on the next slide. Yeah, I've done this. Actually, this is, I thought this was my next. This is actually the 11th time I've taught this class. And I've gotten to the point where I almost kind of know what the next slide is going to be. <laughs> that helps. So here's an example of Kendall notation. So the arrival process is Poisson process. Customers arrive at random at any time whatsoever, but there's like an average arrival rate. You know, you're gonna you can expect so many customers on average in a, in a given amount of time. D, that was the service uh, that that second slot is for the service discipline. D stands for deterministic. That means every service time is the same. It's like you know, two minutes for every customer. Uh, what was the what was the third number? Do you remember? Number, number, of server. Server. number of servers. So there are 20 servers here. What's the fourth number? Capacity. capacity of the queue. That could be infinity, which means there's no finite capacity. The queue could just grow arbitrarily long. Uh, 10 to the 6th, what was that? That was the customer population. And then finally, that's the service discipline or the queuing, queuing discipline. In this case, first in, random out. So that's a typical Kendall notation. So here we go. Oh, all right. Uh, here are some other codes for probability distributions for arrival and service processes. So, GI means general independent arrival times or processing times. So you don't know how arrivals are distributed. You have no idea how arrivals are distributed. You don't even you don't know it's a Poisson distribution process or anything. All you know is that they're independent of each other. The arrivals are independent. So you might have, uh, well, okay. You just, oh, that's all you know. Here, G is general arrival times and processing time. So what I say for arrivals is also for processing. G, general, you have no information whatsoever about, it's completely arbitrary how arrivals come in and, and uh, how things are processed or thing, how things are processed. And if, if you have G's in either place or both slots, then you can't say a whole lot about the queue. You can say some general things, but you can't say a whole lot. Uh, H of K is a hyper-exponential distribution of order K. Uh, confession, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> e sub K is the airline distribution of order K. Um, I, I, I used to know what this is, but I haven't used it in a long time. Does anyone know what these two things are? Negative. I can't complain. You don't know. Uh, M is Poisson arrival times or exponential service times. That's what M means. Okay. And D means constant arrival time. So arrivals come at regular intervals. And or and that's for arrival times. If you have the D in the service time slot, it means customers take the, all customers take the same amount of time to be served. That's what. All right. Uh, let me go back a second. So there are some defaults here. The first three numbers are mandatory. You always have the first three numbers. The fourth number is. The, um, what was that? That was the capacity of the queue. If you leave that off, the default is infinite, is infinity. So if you don't have that, that is, uh, you assume an infinite queue. If you leave off the population, you would also assume that's infinite. So you imagine this process going on forever, where customers are just going to keep coming in, and hopefully the queue will reach some statistically steady state. So that if you know you run this process long enough, the queue is going to grow and shrink, but it has an average size and an average waiting time that remains steady 
over the course of time, from here until eternity. Uh, so that's with an infinite uh, population. And finally, the queuing discipline, if that's left off, the default is a simple FIFO queue, first in, first out. Okay, so the most studied queue is MM1. So we have Poisson arrival rates, and we set lambda to be the average number of arrivals per unit time. So this is, we use the same letter to describe the, um, the uh, rate of occurrences in a Poisson process before. So what's one over lambda? Well, this is a rate. This is number of arrivals per unit time. So what, what are the units here? So lambda, lambda is a rate. Rate has time, it has units, well, some number of things. So number of things per, per unit time. Number of things is unitless. It's just, a, it's just a bare number. It's a whole number. So this is in units of time inverse. So for example, seconds inverse or minutes inverse or hours inverse. Things per unit time, that's a rate. So 1 over lambda is what? That's going to be in units of time. That, you should interpret that as the average time between arrivals. Or if you like, the average time until the next arrival from now. So that's 1 over lambda, the expected time between arrivals. That's the first M. The second M is exponential service times. This means that the amount of time for a service is exponentially distributed. And mu is the average number of units the service facility can service per unit time. So now, this again, mu is the same units as lambda. So mu is also a rate. These are both rates. So mu is the average number of services per unit time. So what's 1 over mu then? This is the expected time of a service. So this is the expected amount of time between from when a customer starts being served until she finishes being served. It's that amount of time. It does not include the time waiting in the queue. Includes the time being just being served. Okay, so that's the average service time, or the expected service time. That's one over mu. I'm doing this explicitly so that when you get to the word problems, you can key in on the word. So if I say the average service rate, you know that a rate is like customers per unit time. Or if I say the average arrival time, or the time between arrivals, you know that's going to be one over lambda. Okay, so what's the one mean? Single server. It's a number of servers, so we've got one server sitting there. So think of uh, you know a line at the bank, or um, you know cordon off with the red velvet ropes. And uh, so customers enter the bank, they immediately get in line, and then there's one teller window open, who takes the next person. Uh, and then everything else, since it's not listed here, are the defaults. So infinite queue capacity, infinite number of customers, queue discipline is first in, first out. And that describes, so the qualitative aspects, MM1 describes the, the, the queue qualitatively. And then the, on, the only two quantitative parameters that we need to know in addition are lambda and mu. From that, we know everything. Okay, once we know lambda and mu, we can actually 
find all the other operating characters. All right, so a, a good first step in doing that is to define the traffic <coughs> intensity, also called the utilization factor, and that's rho is lambda over u. So what, what units is rho in? It's, it's unitless. It's a bare number. It's, it's the ratio of two rates. Okay. So it's the arrival rate divided by the service rate. Okay. And we want this to be less than 1. So this is a, bare, a real number. It's always going to be positive. Or zero, I guess. We want it to be less than one. Why do we want it less than one? So if it's not, it'll never be the same. Right, yeah. So if this is bigger, if this is one or bigger, well, let's say if it's bigger than one. What does that mean? That means people are coming into the queue, people are coming into the system faster than they're being serviced on average. So what that means on average, the queue is just going to start growing and growing and growing. And what we're interested in, because we're going to do this forever, we'd like to be able to get to a steady state. We want to imagine that the queue is going to enter this nice, comfortable, steady state where it's going to fluctuate around some average, but that average stays the same throughout all of time. But if customers keep coming in, that's never going to happen. You're never going to have a steady state. The queue is just going to keep growing and growing and growing, most likely. And so if rho is bigger than 1, the queue is unstable. In fact, if rho is exactly equal to 1, the queue is also unstable. So you also don't get a steady state. It's going to grow eventually without bound, although much more slowly than if, if, if rho is bigger than 1. So rho has to be less than 1 for us to get any kind of steady state symmetry. All right. So using the Poisson probability distribution, the probability of x arrivals in a specific time period is defined like this. So this is the probability of getting X many people. So this is really just to recall what that Poisson process was. And we're actually not going to use this formula directly in today at all. Okay. So this is just really just for a review. So here, X is the number of arrivals in a time period, and lambda is the average or expected number of arrivals in a time period. So this is the probability of getting exactly x many arrivals, given that you have an average number of arrivals of lambda. And this is for integer x. Okay. And there's a nice little histogram giving the probability distribution. It peaks right about where lambda is. So here, lambda <coughs> is, uh, looks like it's about 3. With the exponential service time distribution, the probability of a service being completed within a specific amount of time t is given by this formula. So here, lambda is the average rate of service. It's the number of customers served. The, 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 it's the number of customer, uh, well, what did I say? Is the server just keeps serving one customer after another. This is the average number of customers that served uh, per, per unit time. And so the probability that the, if somebody comes in right now, they're going to be they're going to be finished before, say, t seconds later. It's going to be that probability is 1 minus e to the negative mu t. And remember what this curve does. It starts out at 0 if t is equal to 0, but it increases very quickly exponentially close to 1. So as t lo goes longer and longer, the probability that the customer is already gone approaches 1 exponentially. All right.
So this is what we really need to know for today. And I'll, so I'll step through this slowly. Um, so if, if this thing is less than 1, then in fact, the Q will reach some steady state. And you can actually prove that the steady state exists. And you can solve for the various parameters of the steady state, like the average length of the Q, average amount of time waiting, and so forth. And that's all been done for us, luckily. And for an MM1Q, the formulas that describe all of these operating characteristics are just given by simple algebraic formulas. So no logs, no exp next exponentials, no um, trig functions, none of that. So, for example, what's the probability that the service facility is idle? So, what's the probability that it, at any given snapshot in time, you know, you take a, a picture and the server's just sitting there, not doing anything? That's going to be P naught, that's called P naught. That is 1 minus lambda over mu. Lambda over mu is the traffic intensity. So rho is the traffic intensity. So if the traffic intensity is small, what does that mean? If it's close to zero, that means the server can go really fast. But customers aren't coming in that often. So most of the time, the server's just going to be sitting there, and there's nobody in the system. Okay? But as the traffic intensity approaches one, then the server is going to be busy most of the time until eventually, as it approaches one, the server is going to be busy approaching all the time. So that's one minus, uh, so the chances that the service is actually not busy is going to be one minus row. Probability of exactly n customers in the system. That's given as this. It's P naught, which is one minus rho, <coughs> times rho to the n. This actually is, so P naught is the probability of zero customers, in, what's that? P naught is the probability of zero customers in the system. So this is P n in general, so uh, this actually, this is a probability, this is a discrete probability distribution, we haven't talked about it. This is called a geometric distribution. The probabilities decay exponentially with n. So it starts out, it's a discrete distribution. So it's uh, only for integers n. But for n equals 0, it's the maximum. And then it just decays exponentially as n increases. It's called a geometric distribution. It's sort of like the discrete version of the exponential distribution. Average number of customers waiting for a service. We use the letter L sub Q. Q stands for... Well, Q. Uh, this is the average number of customers in the queue, so before they're being served. So the actual the actual number of customers, the size of the queue, so the number of customers that have not been started, not started in service yet. This is L sub Q, and you can write it as rho squared over one minus rho. That's the easiest way of doing it. But if you prefer lambda and mu, you get this formula. And it's not hard to see that these two things are equal just by plugging in rho is lambda over mu. Okay? So that's the average number of people waiting. As rho approaches 1, what happens to L sub q? Does it get big? Does it get small? It gets bigger. It gets bigger because we've got the 1 minus rho in the denominator. So if rho approaches 1, this the denominator approaches infinity, the numerator approaches 1. So this is actually going to go <coughs> off to infinity as rho approaches 1, which is why we need rho to be less than 1, because we're not going to get a, we're not going to get a finite value for L sub 2. So this is the steady state average number of people in the queue. Okay. Average number of customers in the system, well, 
what's the average number of customers in the system? It's the average number of customers in the queue plus the average number of customers being serviced. Well, that's the average number of customers in the queue. And row turns out to be the average number of customers being serviced. But since there's only, there can only be at most one customer being serviced, that's the average number of customers being serviced. It's less than one because some of the time the server is idle. So with probability row, there's going to be one customer being serviced. And the rest of the time, nobody's going to be serviced. So the average number is going to be row. So that is the L without the sub Q. That's the average number of customers totally in the system, including the Q and the customer being serviced. And that's just row over one minus row. So just compare these two. They're both going to go off to infinity, right, as, as rho gets to 1. So if rho gets to 0, what happens to this? What happens to both of these? They go to 0. Okay, if rho is 0, then the, the both of these are 0. Average time a customer spends waiting for service. So this is, we use the capital letter W, again with the subscript Q. So this is the average time a customer waits in the queue before they actually start being serviced. So this turns out, you can express it any number of ways. This is the average number of people in the queue divided by the arrival rate. I don't have a good intuition as to why that's true. Maybe you do. Uh, it turns out you can write it a couple of different ways. It's lambda divided by mu times mu minus lambda. So mu has to be greater than lambda because rho is less than 1. So mu is bigger than lambda. So mu minus lambda is positive. So this whole thing is going to be positive. And you can rewrite that, taking the lambda over mu here and putting, changing that into a rho divided by mu minus lambda. What unit are these? Is is this in? Per time. Yes. These are in units of time. Well, it's because it's the average time, right? So it's units of time. You can see it that way. But from the mathematics, look at this thing. So rho is unitless, but in the denominator, I have the difference of two rates, which is in units of one over time, and it's in the denominator. So comes up, so the whole thing is in units of time. What about these other things? L and LQ, what units are they in? Uh, no. None, yeah. These, L and LQ are unitless. Okay, they're just bare numbers. All right, uh, W, this is the average time a customer spends in the system, in the entire system. So that W is the average waiting time plus the average service time, which is 1 over mu, and we already, we already said that over here. So the total amount of time the customer spends in the, in the system, including waiting and being served, is going to be WQ, the average waiting time, plus the average service time, which is 1 over mu. And you can simplify this to being 1 over mu minus lambda instead of rho over mu minus lambda. So this is a slightly bigger than this. All right, finally, the probability that an arriving customer has to wait for service. So when does that happen? When does a customer have to wait? When the server is busy. Okay, so what's the probability that the server is busy? Traffic intensity? Yes. It is, it's 1 minus the probability that the server is not busy, which is 1 minus P naught. Well, that's just rho. That's the traffic intensity. So the traffic intensity also has um, an interpretation. This is the probability the server is busy. And so the next arrival will, is going to have to wait. So it's exactly rho. Any questions about these four minutes? So in the book, I actually derive these using 
using um, <coughs> what's called a Markov chain. Um, that particular kind of Markov chain called a birth death process. You don't have to know how it's derived. That's a complete digression. In this book. But if you're curious, um, this is how these, these quantities were actually arrived at. Uses a little calculus to do. Questions on NM1? Oh, the break time, yeah. Great, absolutely. Thank you. Don't be shy. Just interrupt me. This is either on this box or... <laughs> <laughs> It somehow made it to my file share and didn't. It's not going to work very well, so disregard. It's okay. That's why they're here, not online. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. U is per per server. Yeah, yeah it's what it's saying. No, you don't have to. You gotta multiply it.
We don't find P of N. No, skip P of N. Maybe we should, but... Yeah, I'm not doing it. 